Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Bal Krishna Industries Limited Q4 FY23 earnings conference call hosted by Asian Market Securities Limited. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. Actual results may differ from such expectations, projections, etc., whether expressed or implied. Participants are requested to exercise caution while referring to such statements and remarks. As a reminder, all participants' lines will be in a listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Just note this conference call is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mayur Milak from Asian Market Securities Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, on behalf of Asian Market Securities, we welcome you all to the Q4FY23 post call of Balkrishna Industries. I take this opportunity to welcome the senior management team of Balkrishna. We have with us Mr. Rajiv Kodar, Joint Managing Director and other senior team members. I would now like to invite Mr. Rajiv Kodar for his opening remark and then followed by a Q&A session. Over to you, sir. Family Thank uh, you, Mayur. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Along with me, I am Mr. Bajaj, Senior President, Commercial and CFO, Mr. Ravi Joshi, Deputy CFO, Mr. Sushil Mishra, Head Accounts, and HGA, our Investor Relation Advisor. Let me begin with performance updates. Q4, Financial Year 23, has been a better quarter from a sequential point of view. We witnessed uptick in volumes, better demand from our end markets, and partial cleaning, clearing of our high-priced raw materials. However, end markets, especially channel inventory situation, is not completely out of the woods. We believe this channel inventory-led issues may be resolved by June or July. We were able to clock 72,676 metric ton in Q4 of financial year 23, which is 9% Q on Q growth, and accordingly ended the year with 301,181 metric ton, a marginal growth of 4% over the financial year 22. In Q4, the EBITDA margin is at 21.3%, which has improved sequentially. This has been on account of better absorption of high-cost raw material inventory that we were carrying in the system along with lower freight costs. We have continued to make higher spends in brand building and marketing initiatives which has slight impact in margins. Excluding these investments in the margins, we would have been slightly higher in Q4. In view of our long-term strategy of increasing market share, these investments are required to be made as we move ahead to achieve our aspiration of 10% market share over the next few years. As sales volume increases, the spends as a percentage of sales will come down. For financial year 24, we remain positive. We believe that on volume performance, we would be in a better position to discuss in the next few months from now. On margin front, multiple levers, such as favorable raw material cost, better hedge rates, complete normalization of logistic costs will aid the improvement in margin profile. In terms of end markets, we expect Europe to normalize later during the year, while Americas and India will continue its FY23 performance trajectory. Let me now update you on the CAPEX. The advanced carbon black project of 30,000 metric ton per annum is running delayed, and we expect the same to be completed in H2. The CAPEX for the brownfield capacity addition of 25,000 metric ton per annum at Baluch has been completed. Full ramp up of production 
will reach over a period of six months. Now, the Valus location is having a total capacity of 55,000 tons per annum. Further, at a, complete, at a company level, our achievable capacity stands back at the original 360,000 metric tons per annum. For the financial year 24, we estimate a CAPEX spend of Rs 550 to 600 crores. Out of this, maintenance routine at CAPEX will be 250 to 300 crores. The balance will be spent towards new product development like rubber tracks and giant solid tires. This will help us widen our product basket in the end market along with higher investments in brand building and marketing efforts which are required to reach our market share goal of 10%. With this, I now move on to operational highlights. Our standalone revenue for the quarter stood at Rs. 2,325 crore, a degrowth of 4% year on year, which includes realized gain of foreign exchange pertaining to the sales of Rs. 7 crore. For financial year 23, the revenue stood at Rs. 10,072 crore, which includes realized gain of foreign exchange pertaining to the sales of 262 crores. We have crossed the historical mark of Rs. 10,000 crore sales for the first time in our history. For the financial year 23, 51% of sales came from Europe, 22% came from India, 18% from Americas, and balance from the rest of the world. In terms of channel contribution, 69% was contributed from the replacement segment, while OEM contributed to 28%, and the balance coming from offtake. In terms of category, agriculture segment contributed to 63%, while OPR, industrial and construction contributed to 34%, and the balance came from other segments. The standalone EBITDA for the quarter was at Rs. 494 crore with a margin of 21.3%. Financial year 23, EBITDA was recorded at 2,028 crore, translating to a margin of 20.1% and a drop of 7% year on year on year. Per. Other income for the quarter stood at 28 crore, while unrealized gain stood at Rs. 3 crore. Other income for the financial year stood at 114 crore, while unrealized loss stood at 88 crore. Coming to the net forex items, for the quarter, we had a net forex gain of 26 crore, which includes realized gain of 23 crore and unrealized gain of 3 crore. For financial year 23, we had net forex gain of 224 crore, which includes realized gain of 313 crore an unrealized gain loss, sorry, an unrealized loss of 88 crore. Profit after tax stood for the quarter at rupees 256 crore, while for the financial year it stood at 1079 crore. Our gross debt stood at 3254 crore at the end of 31st March 23, out of which about 75% is relating to working capital debt. Our cash and cash equivalents are at 2,075 crore. For financial for quarter of financial year for Q4 financial year 23, the euro hedge rate was at 86.50, while for financial year it was at 85.30. For forward hedge rates for, for financial year 24 currently stand at around 88 to 89 levels. The board of directors have declared a final dividend of rupees 4 per share, subject to the approval of shareholders in the AGM. This is in addition to the early interim dividends of rupees 12 per share paid over the nine months of the life financial year. With this, I conclude my opening remarks and leave the floor open to the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star in two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles to ask question. Please press star one now. 
take a first question from Raina Bashatosh Tiwari from Equirus Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, firstly, uh, on the destocking front, uh, you mentioned that probably by June or July, destocking will get completed. Um, so, can you share some light like what was the retail sales in the quarter versus the the reported number seventy two thousand seven hundred odd? That we cannot, uh, we don't have, and we cannot share those details. But is it like uh, destocking had a, a, a large impact on volumes, or it was not very high impact in this quarter per se? It's higher than our sales, as we've been saying that there is some. Uh, clearing happening, uh, we can share that uh, details, but not that numbers. Okay, and you mentioned that probably uh, Europe will recover a bit later in 24, but uh, America and India will continue to do well. But even America volumes have come off uh, quite sharp now versus the first half. So the, this weakness is uh, seems across uh, even Europe and USA, at least in the second half, basically of last year. So it's a seasonal thing. Europe. Uh, uh, in America, the seasonal impact which is coming, we are quite confident that uh, as of today, America should react, uh, continue its growth trajectory. So we don't see any problem in that. And lastly, what is the gross debt level? Gross debt level, one minute. Around 1300. 3200. Around 3200. Around 3200. Thank you. We take a next question from the line of Siddharth Bera from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, again, first question on the volume side. I mean, in the current uh, quarter, we are already close to like two months. So, uh, given the channel you talking which you are, you are seeing, uh, Start expecting some volume growth coming from Q1, or, or do you think it may take longer for volumes to come back? As we have said in my opening speech, uh, we see some clearance happening from June, July. So that is what we can say at this moment. Okay. Okay. And in the quarter, sir, ASPs also have come down by about 4%. So can you just indicate uh, is this largely of rate pass through or something else also is uh, leading to lower ASPs and uh, should we expect more uh, sort of correction going ahead or this is largely uh, behind for now? So it's a mix of uh, product mix and also the lower uh, freight cost which is passing through. Okay, so, so uh, is this largely normal now or should we expect some more correction to come in the coming quarters? So some minor correction could come in. Okay, got it, uh, got it. And uh, uh, and on the uh, other expense and on the volume side, sorry, I mean, uh, I mean, if you look at India volume, they have grown uh, quite uh, well in this year at 28% if I see, and uh, this quarter also the growth has been quite strong. Can you just indicate, I mean, what is driving this? Uh, because industry has not been growing and uh, the factors are intense and also the office is not very encouraging. So, uh, so some indications on what is driving this and uh, how is there any change in market share on the, on the product side which you can uh, indicate? So it's a mix of everything. So product acceptability, acceptability product performance in the market space as well as we are taking uh, growing faster than the market. So we are taking market share as well. So, I mean, also the branding that we are doing for the Indian market is having a brand, re creating a good brand recall. So all the benefits that we've been talking about are now playing out in the marketplace. So it's a mix of all these factors coming together. And any particular segment which is coming through this, every OTR or uh, it is all, 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 both the products, all over in India, both the product lines are doing well. Okay. So you expect some of the gym growth to continue even in the current year? Yes, we expect it uh, to continue. Yes. Okay, sir. Thanks a lot. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. We take a next question from the line of Momoksh Mandlesha from Anand Raki. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, what is the expectation uh, in terms of RM cost reduction for next quarter? So it will be around 1 to 2%. 
and so the mainly the most of the lower input cost would be passed through uh, uh, i mean the benefit would come in q1 itself so or still we may have to pass we, so we are basically if you see for the whole year what we mentioned is that we will see some improvement in the margins for the whole year uh, could be in the range of uh, 200 to 300 basis points but that will be for the whole year not in this quarter got it got it uh, so uh, in india business just want to uh, come back or uh, do you expect the double digit to continue for fy24 india volumes so we can't comment uh, on the future what's going to happen it looks uh, as we mentioned is that we expect the growth trajectory to continue but difficult to put a number to it okay and so just lastly what would be the inventory level at distributor and now we don't have the number but it is uh, what we are seeing is that it is improving so it is reducing got it sir uh, thank you so much for the opportunity thank you we take a next question from the line of pramod amte from incred capital please go ahead yeah hi uh, thanks for this opportunity first question is with regard to your interest cost it seems to be uh, going up pretty steeply to our last quarter 3q was 15 crores it has come to 25 crores can you give more color what is uh, happening there so libor your it is because of the uribor has gone up so the whatever pcfc we are taking that rate has gone up so once it start reacting then only it will come down otherwise it will stay in the same range so your rates are what now 5% 7% on that what is the current rate it is about 4% approximately so uh, if i have to look at uh, assuming your gross debt is almost around 3000 crores plus so uh, as you said 75% is there so you are is it peaking out or you still feel there is a room for it to go up in absolute number before it peaks out and also second is do you capitalize any of your interest costs for the capex and when that will come through pnl so as far as the number is uh, of the gross debt number wise it will come uh, come down in the uh, month in this financial year so we are working towards that and i was asking on the interest cost and if it's specifically absolute wise it's very difficult to project from a 15 exactly. crores to a 25 crores right so whether it will go from 25 to where or whether it will come down that is difficult to say where it will end up the uh, actual number no but if the number comes down the rates remaining same it will come down but if the libor goes up uh, unilever goes goes up then it may stay at this level but on a gross level the debt will you will see a reduction in that uh, uh, let me put it other way uh, do you capitalize any of the uh, capex related interest cost and how much it was for fy24 so 23 very small portion goes to capitalization otherwise uh, most of it goes to pnl okay and uh, the last question is in terms of the end market pricing behavior because raw material cost has been denied for all the players do you see uh, the manufacturer passing it on to the end consumer is there any different this time to pass it on to the consumer or it's again a fight for pricing so we will also uh, we will we are reviewing the situation very closely if the need arises we may also have to pass on some of that reduction we are, we are trying and seeing in the uh, best interest of the market and how do we retain our market share so we are reacting to that thanks in all thank you we take a next question from the line of ankit kanodia from smart sync services please go ahead yeah thank you for taking my question so my first question is related to the margin uh, so if we look at the quarterly numbers uh, in the last year So from as in from March 2022, it was 21 percent, and then uh, Q1 Q it kept on decreasing for reasons we know, uh, and it has now come back to 21 percent. So and when we are saying that uh, Europe will probably come back uh, later uh, in the in the coming year, so is it uh, uh, right to assume that uh, probably margin will see a good bump up in the second half? and we'll continue to maintain uh, kind of on the kind of margin in the first half as well that in this 21 22 percent margin so as i mentioned earlier during my uh, uh, one of the answer that we are seeing for the whole year 
uh, improvement in margins ranging from 200 to 300 basis point and bulk of it will come towards the end of the year so you you are absolutely right you should see some bump in the second half thank you so my next question is uh, uh, as we know that uh, uh, the difference between the price at which we sell our tire compared to our uh, european counterparts is uh, decreasing over the year so it was somewhere around 50% uh, uh, 15 years back now it is about 10 to 15% so do we see any uh, uh, other players, new players coming in with that kind of a price differential with, uh, with our, ours or maybe our competitors? Or, or our main competition continues to be the European and American counterparts? We always, uh, we are playing in the market which is quality driven and uh, we are competing against the quality players. So price is not... Uh, our uh, game so we are not looking at that we are looking at the top players who have a good um, and whose quality is at par with us so some people the range is also important no right okay thank you thank you we take a next question from the line of nishit jalan from axis capital please go ahead yeah, hi, thank you. Uh, two questions from my side. Number one, uh, we do have a very high gross debt of about 3,200 crores, but at the same time, we have 2,000 crores cash also. That's something we have uh, maintained in the past also, but now the uh, debt levels have gone up and cash has also gone up. So any, any thoughts around that, whether you want to use some of the cash to pay off debt, that is one. Second question is, uh, just wanted to understand what is the working uh, uh, raw material policy of the company, typically what kind of inventory do you carry uh, for rubber and crude derivatives? I'm asking because this time around we have seen a very significant lag in terms of realizing the actual benefit of RM cost. I think more is yet to come. Uh, it's already been two, three quarters. So, so did we have a, did we had a very, very highly disproportionate inventory compared to what you typically keep? Uh, more color on this would be helpful. Thank you. So on the uh, raw material, typically we would keep between 45 and 60 days. Uh, of uh, stock, but uh, yes, we uh, the lag was longer than uh, expected because all of a sudden the market uh, felt saw a correction. So we were planning at high levels, and if you saw the numbers in the last two quarters, they have dipped significantly from the first you know Q2 and uh, Q1. So that ha had an uh, impact on this. Also, the lead times were long, and all of a sudden the shipping times got cut. So we had to plan for both of them. And uh, that's why the lead time, uh, you know, what was being ordered for future uh, came in a little earlier. So that's why we had a, a longer lag. Okay. On the debt side? No, no we are not looking to use the cash for reaping, but for expansion purposes, we will be looking at that. But Mr. Pada, your your net debt levels will still come down, right? You will generate enough cash flow to uh, uh, to internally meet your capex requirements. So if your net debt is coming down, then uh, 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 why not think about using those cash and paying off the debt and not take the currency risk or anything of that sort? No, so we are. Uh, it's a continuous process which we will be reducing, and uh, we don't want to, when we don't when we start using this, we want to keep this as a you know, in case of any opportunity that arises or something. So it's a good cushion to have in the balance sheet for any um, acquisition opportunity or any anything that can come up. No? So, why, you know, we are anyway uh, being able to reduce the debt without that. So we do not envisage to use this money for that. Okay, got it. Just one follow-up. Uh, you just mentioned about acquisition or anything. Is there any, uh, historically, you have talked about that you don't want to set up any plan overseas, or do you think in India, is there any reason or anything you may look to acquire because you have the largest capacity, there is no other company which is even closest to you. So, so what would be the thoughts on acquisition, if at all, if you plan to do at any point in time or point of time in the future? So, I mean, you caught on to my word, but what I was trying to say, in key, uh, see, we don't have any intent to set up a plant overseas right now. Uh, we don't have that in the near future. The I was saying, in case an opportunity comes up, that's why we are, you know, keeping it. It's not that we are actively looking for an opportunity to acquire anybody or there is something in the marketplace. I'm, you know, but you never know what can, uh, you know, you always plan ahead and keep. So you're not running on that day when an opportunity comes up. So 
I think uh, that is what is important. Don't uh, go that you know. Don't uh, uh, look at it that we are looking at an opportunity or we are examining something. There is nothing actively there. I have said we are planning to keep as a backup in case that opportunity comes someday. Got it. Many thanks. Thank you. Also, in addition to so, also in addition to that, any you know, uh, there is one part is of uh, acquisition or potential opportunity. The other is also in-house expansion that we do large expansions. So you know, we plan and keep for that um, part as well. Correct, correct, makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. We take a next question from the line of Avishek Jain from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, what is the current uh, retail demand trend in European agriculture market and U.S. OTR market? So it's better than our wholesale sales currently in both the sectors. So that is a good sign for us. And what is the normal inventory in first half of calendar year and how much it is higher than the normal? It is higher than what they normally would have kept, but it is, as I said, it is reducing. So it is on a downward uh, trajectory. So that is what uh, why we feel that um, you know in the uh, coming quarters we will be able to give you some guidance. Okay. And how is the competitive intensity as uh, other players like Alliance or Yokohama now? It's quite aggressive on the pricing term. So. Uh, do you have any pricing pressure uh, right now on the, your product? No, we are uh, for pursuing our uh, own strategy, so we are working behind that. Okay, sir. And my last question on the uh, capex you have done with the modernization of the plant. So how much benefit will flow in the EBITDA in the coming days because of this? So we will see some improvements come in once the full volumes are back to, uh, you know, back in uh, the uh, back in place. Okay, thanks for that, sir. Thank you. We take a next question from the lineup. Yash Agarwal from IFL Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So one question: How should we look at OPEX excluding freight as a percentage of revenue? Uh, in 3Q, it was at 16%, and in 4Q, it was at 19%. Hello? 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 Yes, can you hear? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, you will see some volatility. As I mentioned in my speech, it is because of the branding exercises that we are intensifying to further uh, you know reach to the end users and create users opportunity to uh, get the brand name more popular to uh, in the end users space okay so that answers my question thank you thank you we take a next question from the lineup lokesh manik from vellum capital please go ahead yeah hi good morning rajiv and team uh, my question was on the India business. If you can give some sense over the last few years, uh, have the margins in the India business been any different from the export business? So there are similar margins to export business. Okay. And my raw material and cost would also involve the inward trade, that is the import from China and from other countries. So, yeah. so raw material would be involved, inclusive of that, right? Inclusive of that. Yeah. That's it for my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take a next question from the line of Basudi Banerjee from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Thanks. Uh, am I audible? Oh, yes, yes you are. Yes. Yeah. So, a few questions. One, so, uh, as you uh, mentioned, uh, retail service business and wholesale. Uh, just to understand from a directional perspective, uh, the quantum of destocking for you. Uh, compared to last quarter, this quarter was similar, higher or lower? Because seasonally Q4 is a better quarter, so retail could have been on an absolute basis better QOQ. So uh, just to understand whether the increase in volume was more led by retail jumping up or lesser destocking, just to understand from that angle. Mix of both, mix of both. 
and this topic compared to last quarter yes it's a then no? yes uh, i mean quantum was similar compared to last quarter so uh, the the stock in the current quarter because the sales has gone up a little bit so the de stocking amount may have come down marginally but uh, more or less it's the quarter is last year should uh, then quarter uh, in q3 yes yes second question sir if i look at your quarterly realization which used to be roughly 260 rupees for a long time and then with rapid inflation and uh, logistic cost inflation it moved up to as high as 350 rupees uh now with the such charge of something like that uh, getting the boom it's down towards 320 so how to look at uh, where one should look at as a steady state realization looking at your product mix come down difficult to give the numbers what numbers will be but slow, slowly slowly it will come down yeah come down towards 260 level or uh, not that level it, it may be 300 or somewhere near to that Sure. And third question is that how much was your uh, brand marketing expenses uh, in FY23 versus FY22? Oh, I don't know. We don't have the numbers ready. We will come back to you. Okay. Thank you. Take the next question from the line of Raghu Nandan from Novama Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, good to see a sequential improvement in volume. Uh, my first question was on the demand side. Uh, the expectations that are coming out for agri production in Europe. There is a lot of black background noise. Uh, we can't hear your question very clearly. Yeah. Uh, is it better now, sir? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, so my first question was on the demand side. Uh, the expectations which are there for agri production in Europe and US indicate that uh, uh, production should be better in CY twenty three versus twenty two. Uh, ideally, that should help the sentiments on agri side. So, what are your expectation as how directionally the demand could improve? on the replacement market side over the next few quarters so it's too early to say but we are expecting a better second half as we mentioned earlier that europe will improve in the second half of this year so we hope uh, that that will play out got it sir and uh, the destocking which is likely to be uh, completed or resolved by june july uh, by then would the inventory level have reached around uh, two months yes should do and my lastly just a clarification uh, the capex of 600 crore for fi24 that would be total capex right growth plus maintenance yes yes yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, that's all from my side. Wishing all the best. Thank you. We take a next question from the line of Arvind Sharma from City. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good morning, sir. And thank you for taking my question. Uh, so it's more on the capacity part. Right now at three sixty thousand. What would your market share be if it is at five to six percent? Then going to ten percent market share requires a big increase in capacity, assuming the industry remains at similar level. I have mentioned earlier in my thing that you know, in case of a big expansion which we need to plan, the uh, money that cash and cash equivalents are being kept for an uh, possibility to get that expansion going. So you are absolutely right that we will require a big expansion. So, so any timeline for that 10% uh, um, market share? Any rough timeline if you could share? We are targeting four to five percent, uh, four to five years. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, thank. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. We take a next question from the line of Sage Shorab Gujar from ICICI Potential AMC. Please go ahead. 
thank you for the opportunity sir so first question is on the hedge rate uh, as you talked about forward hedge rate been currently at 88 uh, for fy23 and 4q uh, how much would be the average hedge rate and what proportion was hedge q3 you are asking for q3 uh, 4q 4q and entire fy23 what would be the average hedge rate and going forward it would be 88 for today for the entire year it was 85.3 for the last quarter it was 86.5 and the for financial year 24 it is around 88 89 and how much proportion uh, i understand we have a uh, rolling forward uh, hedge rate so what proportion we would be hedging currently at, we are uh, targeting 8 to 10 months uh, so 80% is already hedged up for 24 around 88 89 Okay, thanks. Then my second question would be on the branding. So we have been very proactive in advertisement, branding, and all. Uh, so what would be advertisement expenses for FY23 and as compared to FY22? I don't have the exact breakup. Uh, we can get back to you later. Yeah, sure. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. We take a next question from the lineup. Disha Shet from Anvil Shares. Please go ahead. Uh, ma'am, please use the handset. We are not able to hear you. Now, am I audible? Yes, you are. Please go ahead. Uh, so you mentioned that we expect two hundred, three hundred. Sorry, your voice is muffled. Uh, one minute. One minute. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned that we expect two hundred, three hundred basis point of margin improvement over the, the next year. So that would be in you know, in compared to FY twenty three or uh, Q four FY twenty three. Ma'am, your voice is muffled. I, please four, speak uh, louder. Yeah. So so you mentioned an improvement of margin around two hundred to three hundred basis points. So that is compared to Q four FY twenty three or uh, the full year FY twenty three. So it will be on the last quarter two hundred to three percent for all of the year. Whole of the year. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and so when we mention the 10% market share, I'm just um, confirming our current market share is around 5%, correct? 5%, yeah, about approximately. Okay, and so for so how much capacity we would need addition, and how much cash you need for the increase in over next four to five years? We are working on that. I don't have the numbers right now. It's uh, it's on the drawing board. We will come back to them uh, with an announcement when we are ready. Okay, and so just for last question, uh, current inventory days are how much? Around forty-five days. Forty-five. So in June, July, you expect that to become thirty days? We'd like to keep it at this level, around forty, forty-two days, maybe. Okay, and historically also we have been around this level, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to participants: If you wish to ask a question, please press star followed by one on your touchdown phone. Now we take a next question from the lineup. Ashutosh Tiwari from Equitas Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, firstly, uh, on this uh, the next phase of capex, uh, maybe capacity expansion that we'll do uh, from beyond 360, uh, can that be taken up at Bhuj? Uh, or, or there no room over there? We have to plan a greenfield only. No, no. We have ample room there. So we can be uh, take it up over there. And how much capacity can be added uh, in in say Bhuj? A substantial amount. Okay, and and generally, if we plan expansion today, how much time do we take for the plan to come up? So brownfield can be done between 15 and 20 months. Okay, between 20 months. Okay, and secondly, uh, on the mining side, on the ultra large tires. Uh, How is the progress we entered the segment around four five years back? So, what kind of volumes are doing over there right now? I don't have the breakup of the volumes exactly, but we are getting a good response. Our uh, tests, I mean, uh, tests have been conducted, results have been good, and now it's become a regular sales uh, feature. So that is uh, going on as a local a regular product. So it's picking up well all over the world. We got good response for it. But but what is the capacity of the Delta Large tires? Sorry, could you repeat the last question? What is the capacity of this ultra large mining tank right now with us? Around 5,000 tons for the whole annum. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. 
We take a next question from the line of Pragya Shah from Concept Invest Well. Please go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry you... to interrupt now. Yes, please use the handset and uh, ask your question again. We're not able to hear you, Ms. Pragya. We're still unable to hear you. As we are unable to hear the question from the participant, we take a next question from the line of Momoksh Mandlesha from Anand Rati. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for uh, giving the opportunity. So, what is the carbon like sales to third party in FY23? Approximately 6%. 6% revenue for a full year, right? And, and what would be this uh, uh, utilization of this uh, carbon black plant, uh, black plant in FY23, sir? Sorry, what would be the a plant utilization for this uh, carbon black? 85 to 90 percent. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, may press star and one on their touchstone phone now. We take a next question from the lineup, Mayur Milak from Asian Market Securities. Thank you. Uh, please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, so, you know, just trying to understand the European situation. So, we believe there was some news that Chinese tires were supposed to come back, and then there is again this news that, uh, you know, there would be sufficient in and around. So, just wanted to understand what is the real situation in Europe. Are the Chinese competitors back, or we still get this advantage of uh, using that market for a longer duration than what we had earlier anticipated? As of now, we are not facing much of a competition from uh, Chinese brands uh, because the uh, market size is, uh, for, I mean, it's not a very big size of like a passenger car or truck bus, so that is why. Right. right. And, and typically, what would be now, the you know, with all this correction in freight and everything, what would be a typical difference of uh, the selling, offering, selling price difference between you and your uh, uh, closest Chinese counterparts? We don't have their pricing because they have, there is no fixed pricing for them, so it's difficult to give you an answer. And we always try and benchmark against the top quality European players, so that's what we are aiming to get to. Right, so, so, so no, just put it the other way around, so just trying to understand the general understanding was, you know, the difference is about between 12 and 15 percent. So is it safe to assume that that would kind of continue even now? Yes, yes. I mean, if you see the brand ring exercises that we've been doing has got up from about a gap of about 40 or percent to gap of 15 percent. So it's a lot of uh, effort and uh, hard work done over the years. So we would like to maintain that. Sure, sure. Thank you, sir. That will be all. Thank you. We'll take a next question from the line of Sunil Shah from Turtle Star. Please go ahead. Mr. Shah, your line is unmuted. Please go and ask your question. Please unmute yourself from your device. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, I'm audible, I guess. Yeah, uh, yes. sir, my question is yeah, my question is an extension of the previous question. Uh, sir, the pricing differential that we have versus our European competition. So, well, you know, if I look at our company over the last many years, the prime advantage that we had was more on the labor cost advantage. That is, our labor cost was reasonably less than the global competition. Uh, now, with increased automation that we are doing in our company, uh, power cost is certainly going to be one uh, way cost, which is going to be a significant part going forward. So, so, still to maintain that advantage, what are we doing on the power cost front so that you know our edge remains over our global competition? Meaning. Historically, I believe just the labor advantage had given us a cost advantage of more than 20%. But with automation, power cost will be certainly a bigger factor. So are we doing anything on that power cost front to reduce and you know have an edge over the global competition? Because once we had an aspiration of 28 to 30% operating margin, uh, and now you know we are in that 21% mark, 
and obviously due to many reasons that we know in the last few years. But on the labor, on the power front, if you could just let us know anything that we are doing there to gain some advantage. So that is why this our carbon plant came because it is our self consumption as well as whatever the tail gases are produced, they will be converted into the power. So it reduces the power cost. Yeah, uh, so so uh, any, any differential in cost that will attain over a period of time in, in power itself? Percentage differential versus the global consumption, but definitely we are selling huge cost. Okay, and uh, sir, you know, once upon a time we used to be a debt free company, now we are net debt of 1200 crores. So, with just about 300 bits increase in our margin, uh, when when we regain that earlier, you know, uh, stage of being a debt free company, meaning uh, we will continue to have the debt uh, in our books as well as you mentioned. As I was mentioning, uh, that the gross debt will continue to go down and uh, uh, that will have an impact, but uh, we are working towards uh, uh, being a debt -free, uh, net debt-free company. So hopefully we should be there in about 15 to 18 months, subject to no major expansion uh, getting around before that. Okay, sir. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. We take a next question from the line of Chirag Maru from Keynote Capitals. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, as you said that our overall market share is about 5% approximately. Uh, will it be possible for you to provide a bifurcation between how much market share we have in agriculture and OTR? No, no, we don't, uh, we can't give the bifurcation. Okay, uh, no worries. Uh, second, I wanted to understand what is our strategy or initiatives towards uh, increasing a market share in OTR as at this moment? So if you see, we've been constantly increasing the sales in the OTR segment and uh, the growths are coming in higher. So whatever we are doing, working towards, is now paying uh, off in the marketplace. So that is what we have been working for the last three to four years. And you can see the numbers constantly increasing. So are we are we doing any kind of R&D spend related to OTR at this moment as a percentage of sales? That is a part and parcel. So that goes on for all the product lines that we are in. Uh, it's is not just for OTR or earlier, it was not just for Agri. It is being done across the product basket that we make. Okay. And the last one from my end. Uh, so I just wanted to understand if uh, any of the international players creating a base in India and trying to become a bit competitive based on their uh, employee expenses. Uh, if, uh, if in case, are there is there any kind of an acquisition taking place or a big plant setup taking place which can create a competition issue for Bakrishi? We can't comment on uh, competition and what they plan to do. Oh, okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We take a next question from Lana Pramod Amte from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, this is with regard to the domestic business. Uh, what is your current market share in the agri and uh, are you planning, what's the medium term ambition on the market share the, the way they have for global? And second, uh, do you plan to expand into any related uh, sub-segments in automotive? So uh, in India, our uh, market share would be about 3 to 3.5%. Three and and uh, apart from in related business, apart from carbon black, we do not envisage to at the moment to go in any other business. And uh, the second one is with regard to the margin expansion. So you are at around, uh, if I'm not wrong, 2,80,000, 2,90,000 capacity uh, uh, production. Uh, assuming uh, this year is going to be a single digit growth. In my opening statement, I mentioned that we ended the year with 301,000 uh, odd metric tons. So we are at, last year we clocked 301,181 metric tons. Right. Now I was looking from a quarterly analyzed basis, if I had to look at, uh, because if I had to look at the margin guidance which you are talking about, uh, expanding from the current level by another 300 basis points, right, uh, from the 4Q. So if I had to look at in that context, you will be hitting your peak margins, you are at the lower utilization than the past. 
So you feel in this up cycle, you will scale a new high in uh, operating margins without the carbon back itself? Difficult to comment on now. But your guidance looks to be heading in that direction. That is what we are estimating, yes. We are guiding in that. So we'll, let's see how it plays out. Okay. Thanks a lot, Lewis. Thank you. We take a next question from Lana Pragya Shah from Concept Investwell. Please go ahead. Um, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. So um, my question is regarding the expansion uh, products uh, like rubber tracks and gyoli tanks. So can you give us a more uh, view into like how is the market size or competitive density? Sorry, your voice is muffled. I can't uh, really hear what your question is. Uh, no, no, it's uh, muffled. I mean, I can hear your voice, but I can't hear the words that you're saying. It's coming uh, muffled. Okay. Uh, my question is regarding your expansion into the market with uh, the product like uh, track and track solid fuels. Student modeling, please. So, can you tell us about the market competitive? Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt. Your audio is not very clear. Um, okay. Um. As we are unable to hear the question from the participant, we move on with the call. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of the question and answer session, and I'd now like to hand the conference back over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Mayur. Thank you to everybody for coming on this call, and we'll see you at the end of next quarter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Asian Market Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.